Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I want to talk to you today about Aperture. So the last video you watched, the last lecture you watched was shutter speed. And shutter speed is how long your shutters open. So how long you leave the faucet on of water. Remember, if you leave it on and walk away, you're in a sink full of water. If you just turn it on, turn it off, you have just a tiny bit of water. That's your shutter speed. Now your aperture also controls light, like your shutter speed did. Except that instead of how long it's open, it controls how large the opening is. So if I have an opening in my lens like this, and then I open it like this, those are different sizes of aperture. When you made your pinhole camera, if you used a really small pin, your aperture is a lot smaller than if you would have used like a actual like pen, you know, like an ink pen, if you would have pushed that in there. That's the size of the opening is called your aperture. So for the definitions on your worksheet, you're going to write down that the def the opening aperture is the opening which light travels through to take a photograph. The aperture refers to, so like when we talk about the numbers on the aperture, it's actually referring to the size of the opening. We also call it an f-stop. So if I say like f22, f1.8, those are apertures. We just use the letter f to go with them. So we're going to talk again. You know, shutter speed had two things it controlled when you used it correctly. Aperture also has two things it can control. And the first thing is the same as shutter speed. It's the amount of light that lets the exposed the light in, the amount of light that comes in to expose the image. All right, so here we have an example, a little diagram, if you will. We have the number, I'll use my mouse instead of point, the number F16, what that aperture kind of looks like in relation to the other aperture, so it's a very small opening, and then less light, okay? So we go down here, F4, the aperture is about halfway open and more light and it keeps going. Now, you'll notice that the larger the number, the smaller the opening. And we're gonna talk about why that is a thing, okay? Why it's kind of the opposite of what you'd think. All right, so on your paper, I want you to write down a large number equals less light, okay? That's what's a little bit confusing, is that as you go up in numbers with f-stops, the less light you're getting, the smaller your opening's getting. So the smaller number equals more light. If you're, here's one of your cameras that you're going to have. If your aperture, your aperture is found right here on this ring, these numbers right here that go on, this is one of the Nikon cameras. And the aperture, the smallest one is a 22. Yep, there you go. 22. And the largest opening is a 3.5. That's a pretty large opening, okay? The 3.5 lets in a lot more light than the 22. So why do we have these numbers, and why do they seem backwards? Well, it's because these numbers actually refer to the depth of field, which is the second thing that aperture controls, is your depth of field. So, what is your depth of field? Your depth of field is how much of your picture is in focus, all right? So, for example, if you look down at the little screen of me right here, if I hold up my hand like this and you see my fingers, you can see me behind it. And we're both pretty sharp and in focus. That's a deep depth of field. You know everything in the picture. My fingers, my head, my pantry back there, they're all in focus. Now a shallow depth of field would be if I had my hand here and my head and then my pantry and only one of those things was in focus and everything else was very blurry, okay? So for example, we have this picture here. This is an F22, the small opening, but everything is in focus, okay? The front part with the flowers, the girl, 
the tree, all the branches all the way back here, all of it is in focus. And we go halfway to f5.6, about a halfway point for apertures. Notice all of a sudden everything from this line back is blurry and everything from this line forward is blurry. Our depth of field just got a lot narrower. Okay. Then if we go to the next one, F1.4. Oh my goodness, it's letting in tons of light, which is good if you're in a dark area. However, we have this very shallow depth of field. And you'll see a lot of photographers use this, or you'll see um you know what? The new I, the newer versions of iPhones do this, which I don't have. But if you have one of the newer versions of iPhones, I have no idea. Android might do it as well. But they have like a depth of field feature that makes your pictures look extra, I think, uh, bougie, you know, fancy. And so um, that is essentially the aperture just got a lot larger. So your depth of field got much more shallow. So this is great if like if you're taking a portrait of me sitting here and you want me to be in focus, but you want all the other distractions behind me and in front of me to be blurry. So you're just focused on me. That's when it's great. As a professional photographer, I use the largest F number, F stop number I can in most of my portraiture, unless I have lots of people. OK, because I really want us to focus on certain parts of the picture. I want your focal point to be really specific. Here is another example I'm going to walk you through just kind of quickly. We have crayons. You can think of this as people, okay? This is a good way to remember how the depth of field works on your cameras. If you have a depth of, if you have an F1.4, think of it as only one crayon is in focus, okay? And then as I go up my numbers, here's F2, F2.8, more crayons become in focus. So if I get all the way up to, here's 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, and then 22. My crayons are all in focus. So I've heard Mrs. Dale, I'm going to totally steal this from Mrs. Dale. She's so smart. I've heard her say, if you use an f-stop of a smaller f-stop, like an f-stop of three, think of it as like you're only focusing on three people. If you use an f-stop of 22, think of it as focusing on 22 people. Okay? The bigger the number, the more you can focus on. And it really is just a matter of preference. And that is what makes photography really artistic, is when you start manipulating your camera to do these kinds of things for you, okay? So those are the two things that your aperture controls. Again, your aperture on our cameras and most film cameras are always found on the, um, on the lens. There are a couple of different uh, rings on the lens. There's one that focuses. I, some of them have zoom. Some of the lenses we use have zoom, so that's a second ring. These are both smooth. The aperture ring, look at that. You can hear it clicking. And it always has these numbers associated with it. OK? So if you have any questions about aperture, let me know, but I look forward to seeing how you use Aperture to your advantage.